Hello there! This video will cover some tips that can help with a workflow on a Chromebook, which will include plugging in an external display, toggling the primary display, toggling mirroring, how to quickly cycle through windows, connecting to a TV as an external display, and how to transfer files from Linux on a Chromebook to Linux on an Android. If you are interested in Linux on a Chromebook, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on a Chromebook without running. There will be further information, links, and updates in the pinned comment for this video. By default, Chromebooks can plug into an external display, which automatically gives us a second display that we can work with. The only thing we need to keep in mind if we are using a USB-C cord is that the USB-C cord has to be able to handle video output because not all USB-C cords can handle video output. Now this MNN display comes with its own USB-C cord capable of video output and it also comes with its own stand, power adapter, USB-C power cord, mini HDMI to HDMI cord, and a manual. I will have a link to this specific MNN display in the pinned comment. When we plug in an external display to a Chromebook, it can let us more easily multitask. For example, it can help with video editing, programming, full-on music production, writing a book, and so on. There are a few handy key combinations that can make navigating the displays, desktops, and windows easier. First up, we have Alt Full Screen. This will toggle the primary display, meaning what we have on the displays will switch with each other. If you are using a Windows keyboard like I am here, then the key combination is Alt F4 instead. Next, we have Control Full Screen. This will toggle mirroring, so whatever we do on the computer will be shown on the external display. And again, if we are using a Windows keyboard, the key combination will be Control F4 instead. Finally, we have Alt Tab. This will let us quickly cycle through any windows that we have open. Another external display we can plug a Chromebook into is a TV. This will require an HDMI cord. Retractable cords can be especially nice in this case because they are compact and easy to put away. We will also likely need an HDMI to USB-C adapter. I will have a link to both the HDMI cord and a link to the HDMI to USB-C adapter in the pinned comment. Finally, we have transferring files from Linux on a Chromebook to Linux on an Android. Before we plug in our Android device to the Chromebook, it can be helpful to enable USB debugging on the Android because it can help with issues accessing Android files from another computer. To enable USB debugging, we first have to enable developer options. We can do that from Android settings, and if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can click on About Phone, and then we can press on the build number until we are asked to enter in our device's password. And after we've done that, we then have developer options. After enabling developer options, we can go back to the main menu in Android settings. From there, we can go to System, and then click on Developer Options. And then from there, we can scroll down to the Debugging section and then turn on USB Debugging. Keep in mind that you can turn off USB Debugging and Developer Options at any time. Now we can go ahead and plug in our Android into the Chromebook. After we've done that, we'll need to go back to Android Settings and then click on Connected Devices. From there, we'll need to click on USB. And then under the Use USB 4 section, we can then select File Transfer. Now from the Chromebook, I'm going to copy a picture from the Linux files on the Chromebook over to the Linux side on the Android. So from the Chrome OS File Manager, I'm going to go into Linux and navigate to where my picture is. Once I have done that, I'm going to go into the phone, which is labeled Moto G in my case and then I'm going to go into the Android folder. After that, I'll go into the data folder, and then I'm going to go into the tech.ula folder, and after that, I'll go into the files folder, and finally, I'll go into the storage folder. Now, depending on the device, if you are missing the tech.ula files and storage folders, that's okay because you can create them from the Chromebook. 
From the storage folder, I'm going to paste the picture that I copied. Then from the Android, under the Use USB 4 section, we can select No Data Transfer. Finally, from the Android, after starting up Linux, we can then go to File Manager PC Man FM. And then from there, we can go up to Directories. And then we can go into the Storage folder. And then we can go into the Internal folder. And then here we can see that the picture I copied from the Chromebook is there, and I can access it. And that wraps it all up, so I'll see you soon.